Good morning, church. Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship service here at Springfield Masonic Community. My name is Rick. Thank you for allowing me to serve as your chaplain. I know you made special effort to be here this morning because it's been raining all week. In the days of Noah, it rained 40 days and 40 nights. We're on day seven. <laughs> We've got a few more days to go to catch up. So, Tom told me that if God called Noah today, that he'd need a building permit and <laughs> all of these things. So, it probably wouldn't happen. I am delighted that you are here today. If you're watching online, thank you for joining us online. We are in the middle, week three, of a five week sermon series on heaven. Oftentimes we think about heaven as a place we will enjoy in the future. Today I'm going to lift up how heaven can help us today. So at that, let us prepare our hearts for worship. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. What shall I return to the Lord for my benefits? I will lift up God for salvation and call the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious is the name of the Lord, is the death of his faithful son. Our next hymn will be. All Things Bright and Beautiful, number 243. <clears throat>
As we come to our time of prayer, I would like to remind everyone that this coming Friday at 1 o'clock in the chapel, we will celebrate the life of Ed Fisher. He was a resident here for over 20 years, um, served as the president of the Independent Living, and um, his family will be coming in providing some refreshments, but they would like to have a celebration of his life here uh, on Friday at 1 o'clock. Also, keep those who are not feeling well in your prayers. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Dear Jesus, you are the Good Shepherd. You know your own and your own know you. When we, your sheep, were lost, you searched for us, found us, and carried us home. We thank you, Jesus, for protecting us from temptation, for receiving us into your presence, and for healing our pain. Like the lost sheep, we confess that sometimes we go astray and lose our way. Forgive us, Lord. By your grace, help us to keep our hearts and minds focused on you and doing your will. Give us the strength and courage to honor you, to give you glory, and to bless your holy name in all that we do. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And let us pray together our Amen. Lord's Prayer. <laughs> our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We have special music. Hi there. This morning we're going to have a piece which I wrote, upon which I wrote a fantasy. Fantasia, rather, on the hymn, My God and I. And I wonder how many of you know that hymn that is outside of the choir. Well, anyway, what we're having, what, what the story about this is, I just learned it myself. But the thing was, I was asked to learn it by a very special lady named June Alice. June asked me to learn it, and so I did so, and I'm going to play a brief fantasia on it.
Our scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 15, verses 1 through 7. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulder and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. A church youth group visited an orphanage in Jamaica on their mission trip. One of the children in the orphanage was a teenager named Donald. Donald had cerebral palsy, and for many years he was not able to get adopted. No families were able to care for his special needs. On the mission trip, the youth group witnessed something special. A couple was found who wanted to adopt Donald and care for him. When his new mother hugged her new son, the tears flowed, tears of joy. Donald's face beamed. He smiled from ear to ear. The youth group had never experienced such a joyous family occasion. One of the youth commented that this is what heaven must be like when the lost sheep was found by the shepherd. It is like being adopted into God's family. The parable of the lost sheep is about a shepherd who leaves the 99 to find the lost sheep. The parable teaches that every sheep is important to the shepherd. Even one is too valuable for the shepherd to lose. When the shepherd finds the lost sheep, the, the Bible says, the angels rejoice in heaven. They praise God for the lost sheep who finds its way back into the family of God. What happens on earth influences what happens in heaven. When somebody who is lost receives the grace of God on earth, the angels rejoice in heaven. There is an interconnection between heaven and earth. It is easy to forget this truth. We can live like we have blinders on when we go about our day. We only see what happens in the here and now on earth and forget what we do here influences what happens there. In this parable, Jesus teaches us to look at life on earth by how it impacts life in heaven. Jesus invites us to take a heavenly perspective upon earthly things. What we say and do on earth influences what happens in heaven. So how does this work? What difference does heaven having a heavenly perspective make on our everyday earthly lives. Psalm 16 says, You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. A heavenly perspective can give us eternal pleasures right now. A heavenly perspective can help us to follow the path of life the path that God has laid before us. English Puritan pastor and author Richard Baxter eloquently wrote in his book, 
the saints' everlasting rest. Why are not our hearts continually set on heaven? Why dwell we not there in constant contemplation? Bend thy soul to study eternity, busy thyself about the life to come. Habituate thyself to such contemplations, and let not those thoughts be seldom and cursory, but bathe thyself in heaven's delights. Here are four ways that I believe a heavenly perspective can help us follow the path of life that God has laid before us today. This is how we receive eternal pleasures in the here and now. First, heaven protects us from temptation because it keeps our hearts focused on what pleases God. In the Lord's Prayer, we pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Nothing can diminish the glory of God on earth more than falling into temptation. Falling into temptation can lead to doubt and regret. It can rob us of our joy and peace. <coughs> when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, he rebuked the devil by reading scripture. Staying in the word of God is so important in keeping our hearts focused on heaven. God's word can give us courage and assurance in times of trial because God's word reminds us of the promises of God. 1 John 5 says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Heaven can help us resist temptation and obey God. Second, heaven can give us energy and strength to live out our faith. What gift from heaven does God give us here on earth that can energize and strengthen our faith? I want you to listen for the gift in the book of Revelation, chapter 5. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who was seated at the throne. When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They sing a new song. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads and myriads and thousands and thousands, singing with full voice, Worthy is the Lamb. What gift does God give us from heaven to earth? Music. Music is heaven's gift to us, which gives us energy and strength for our faith here on earth. In this passage, heavenly music starts with the four creatures, then the twenty-four, and then thousands and thousands. There is a widening circle of God's praise in heaven until the final verse in verse 13. I want you to listen for how many people and creatures are included in this. Then I heard every creature in earth and in heaven and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. How many? All. Oh, all things bright and beautiful. All things on heaven and on earth. Walter Savage Landor said, Music is God's gift to humanity, the only art of heaven given to earth, the only art of earth we take to heaven. When we sing, we join God's heavenly symphony. If you are struggling in your faith, 
and you need some energy and some strength, sing praise to God and let Him lift your spirits high. Third, how does heaven help us? Heaven can serve as a balm for our pain. When we are feeling down, thinking about heaven can cheer our spirits, ease our suffering, and comfort us in our grief. Eric Clapton is an English guitarist. He wrote the song, Tears in Heaven, after he lost his four-year-old son in an accident. Tears in Heaven is a deeply personal song to Clapton, who writes that he found healing through the music. Here is the first verse. Would you know my name if I saw you in heaven? Would it be the same if I saw you in heaven? Beyond the door, there's peace, I'm sure. And I know there'll be no more tears in heaven. 1 Thessalonians 4 says, But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. Heaven comforts us in our grief, because in Christ we have hope. And fourth, and lastly, when our hearts are set on heaven, we can be an encouragement to others. It is easy to focus on our own suffering. We can get lost in what we no longer have. Grief can be debilitating for some. Heaven can help us remember to encourage others who are suffering a similar loss. Heaven reminds us that we are not alone. The Good Shepherd finds the lost sheep. Johnny Erickson Tata was in a diving accident as a young girl. The accident left her a quadriplegic. There is a saying after you lost something important to you, you get bitter or you get better. Johnny could have very easily grown bitter, but God helped her be better. Johnny started a worldwide ministry for the disabled called Johnny and Friends. She writes, there's not a doubt in my mind that I'll be fantastically more excited and ready for heaven than if I were on my feet. You see, suffering gets us ready for heaven. Heaven becomes our passion. <coughs> so how does heaven help us today? Heaven protects us from temptation. Heaven can give us energy and strength to live out our faith. Heaven can help soothe our pain. Heaven can help us be an encouragement to others. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I've heard people say, what will it be like to go to heaven? And the question I like to change it around to me, it's not so much what it's going to be like when I go to heaven. It's about the one who is coming to get me. When the good shepherd found the lost sheep, all heaven rejoiced. When the good shepherd finds us and receives us into his presence, then we will know we are home. All heaven will rejoice, in heaven we will dwell eternally in the shelter of the Most High and rest in the shadow of the Almighty. May it be so. Amen. Amen. We have one song left. We're going to sing it through twice. Number 221 in your hymnal.
thank God for your giving. I pray that you find a meaningful way to give back to God for all the blessings that you have received. So at this time, let us sing together the glory of Padre.